Our next speaker is Atma from the Department of Ecology and Evolution, and he will be presenting What Can Plant-Soil Interactions Tell Us About Forests? Uh, hi, everyone. Before I start, I want to thank my lab, my advisor, Rafael D'Andrea, and IX for giving the computational resources for everything I did and show here. Uh, I'm a theoretical ecologist, all right? Uh, I don't go to the field. But in my vacation days, I still go out and then take pictures like this. And I really like all this biodiversity. And I'm not going to be convincing you why biodiversity is important, but I'm going to tell you that we need to preserve it. And to preserve it, we need to understand it. And I'll tell you how we can understand plant biodiversity. Uh, this starts with a simple question like this. So many of you would have seen palm trees and cactus like this. Uh, but you don't see them everywhere. You don't see palm trees on mountain tops, and you don't see cactus everywhere. You only see them in deserts. And uh, the standard explanation for this is that it's, it's climate. So you can't see palms in mountain tops because it's too cold for them there. And you can't see cactus. You see cactus in the desert because it's hot and dry over there. And cactus are really good at hot and dry conditions. Uh, but that's not everything. There is a lot of things which goes on below the ground. And this is something plants can actually change, unlike the climate. Uh, particularly, there are a lot of microorganisms in the soil. And uh, plants interact with them. And they help them get nutrients and water. These fungus, they are really interesting because they are right on the root. They help them get nutrients and water. But they also form these protective sheets defending them from viruses which would kill the plant. So uh, what is the consequence of this plant-soil interaction for the patterns of plant biodiversity? Uh, to do this, I'm a theoretical ecologist. I've built a simple model like this, where we have plants and soil and the interaction between them. There can be two types of interaction. The first one is plants conditioning the soil. For example, this sphagnum. These plants make the soil super acidic. And the other plants can't live there once they are super acidic. Uh, and this is filtering. I just explained filtering to you with the example of cactus in a desert. And with this simple conceptual model, I come right on these equations. You don't have to worry about them. I solve them in a computer. It's, it's not exactly like this, but you get the idea of working in a computer. Uh, now I'll tell you what patterns I found when, it when plants and soil interact. Uh, with this simple hypothetical forest with four trees, two palm trees, and two pine trees. And we're talking about soils. So let's assume that the palm trees like brown soil, and the pine trees like green soil. What happens when the soil is uniform everywhere? It's all brown. Like I told you earlier, you'll only see palm trees and no pine trees because the soil is brown. There is no green soil for the pines. Um, and in the case of pure filtering, plants are not conditioning the soil. You would see every, all the trees. You would see palm trees in places where the soil is brown, and pine trees in places where soil is green. And you would see a mix of them in places where soil is neither green or brown. But when plants condition the soil, particularly when palms are making the soil browner, because that's what they like, and pines are making soil greener, and that's what they like, you start seeing patches. Forests get patchy. So you get a patch of palm trees, and you get a patch of pine trees. And these patches change in shape and size. I'm not going to bore you with those details. But we can tell how these shapes and changes based on the characteristics of the plant. Basically, how far they disperse seeds, how do they compete with other plants, and so on. So what did we learn here? When plants condition the soil, you only see similar plants together. But you can also see dissimilar plants in separate patches. The forest becomes very patchy when uh, in plant-soil interactions where plants condition the soil. And we can also describe the shape and size of these patches. In practice, we want to do it for large forests like tropics, where there are uh, hundreds of plant species. So I hope I've convinced you that we can learn about plant biodiversity using mathematical modeling. And once we understand plant diversity, we can work hard to conserving the, uh, all this beautiful nature we have. And thank you.